Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly crafting, cooking, and organic gardening videos right here on my YouTube channel. In this video, it's part number three of my locally grown picnic quilt video series, and I'm gonna be talking about trimming down all our quilt blocks to size so they're all the same, and then working on the design wall to place the different blocks where we want them to get the finished quilt design. If you're coming across this tutorial randomly and you wanna check out all the videos in the locally grown picnic quilt series, make sure you click right there so I can take you to the full video playlist and you can watch all the videos in the series right in order. But if you're here for this part three video, let's get started. Okay, so once your 16 blocks are complete, you are going to need your cutting mat, the rotary cutter, a couple of rulers. You can get away with one that's a little bit shorter, but because these blocks measure 16 and a half inches, it's preferable if we can do our two ruler trick using two rulers that are longer than the 16 and a half that this requires. Then I want you to measure each one by one and find which one is your smallest block of the entire bunch of 16. So each one of these blocks was designed to be finished at 16 and a half inches squared, right? When the block is like this individually. Once it's inside the quilt, it's gonna measure 16 inches by 16. And the reason for that is because we're using quarter inch seams to sew this into, right, to other blocks and to sew it into the rows and columns on the quilt top. Now, we have to trim all of these down to size. By that, what I mean is that you need to measure each one individually and take notes. So this one measures 16 and a half by 16 and a half as well. So I don't have a problem here. What I do want you to do is continue to do that for every block in your stack and determine what the smallest one is. Say it's 16 and a quarter inches or 16 inches square, the smallest block. Then I want you to go back and trim every single one of them down to whatever that smallest block size is. The reason for that is that before you start putting your quilt top together, you can't sew these together if they're not the exact same size because they're all perfect squares. They need to measure everything exactly so that all the rows and columns on the quilt top will come together nicely. Now, once you've trimmed all 16 of your blocks down to the same size, they're all identical measurements, and you've trimmed them down to measure whatever the smallest one is, then you should have 16 identical blocks. And when all your blocks are trimmed down to size, you can head on over to the design wall. And a lot of you in previous quilt alongs have asked me what exactly this is, and this is just a thin piece of polyester batting that I thumbtacked right into the drywall. So it's nothing fancy, and you can really use all kinds of different things. There's no adhesive on this at all. All it is is the friction that's created between the fabric and this fabric holds it up. So it's totally uh, removable, you can replace the different things, and so it's a great way for you to audition different blocks or whatever your quilt design and layout is, so you can then stand back, take a look at it, and see if you wanna move any things around, which this is totally going to apply for this quilt along as well. I'm gonna put up here the blocks in the orientation to create the design that I came up with, but feel free to do whatever you want with the 16 blocks that you ended up with. So here's how the full layout of the design goes. play around with it any which kind of way you want. It doesn't have to be the same way I did it here. Here are some examples of other ways that you can orient the same 16 blocks. So those are just a few ideas to give you, but there are definitely dozens and dozens of different ways to orient the blocks, so feel free to play around with that until you get a design that you really love. Now, for sewing these together, we're still gonna be using our scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, but this time, I want you to note something. In the design that I came up with here, there's a lot of geometric shapes, and so you can see that to create the look of all these four with the green towards the center, all these seams here are going to have to match nice and perfect so that you get the illusion of that green square in the center, then the yellow on the outside, the blue, like that. And so if you wanted to get it to look just like it's supposed to in the design, then you definitely wanna make sure that you're abutting all those points at all the intersecting points on the different block pieces, okay? But if you don't wanna bother having to match up all these different intersecting points here on the multiple blocks and patchwork pieces, then you may consider coming up with a more simple design like this one. If we orient each block in the exact same way, I'll just do these top two rows so I can show you all, but if you did all the blocks the same as this, 
It's going to be real simple because there are no intersecting points in the patchwork. You're always going to have the ones right here when we're combining together the rows and the columns. You're always going to have to match up those points right here. But you're not going to have to match up anything like the previous design because, as you can see, the side that has the multiple pieces right here, one, two, three seams, is not going to be sewn to the another side with the same amount of seams. Instead, we're sewing it just to a strip of fabric. So for whatever design you end up going with, remember we're going to be using our scant quarter of an inch seam allowance and you're going to piece these together in sections. So because the entire quilt is only four blocks across, we're going to do this in twos. So I would sew this one to this one, this one to this one, these two and these two. So just keep it like in pairs and then repeat the same on this side. Those two, then these two, these two, these two. Once I have them all done, I can put them up here and then I'll start combining, basically creating half of the quilt top first and then the other half. So then I would sew together this to this to this to this so I can get half of the quilt as one long strip and then repeat the same thing on the other side. Once you have those two halves, all you need to do is stitch them together down that center seam and then you'll be all done with the quilt top. So as you can see, I have to get to piecing this quilt top. You all have homework to do as well. I'll meet you right back here next Thursday for video number four of the Locally Grown Picnic Quilt series. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit it with that thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't you forget to click that subscribe button right there so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks for watching, go do your homework, and I'll see you next time.